I am Dana Capel, an occupational therapist. My colleague is Noah Nitsan. She's an occupational therapist as well. And we both work at the Technology Consulting Center at Beit Dizzy Shapiro. And we're going to present on how we are using the iPad for play with children with disabilities. I'm starting with this photo, even though it doesn't actually represent or present a typical play situation. But it is very civic, significant for Noah and I, as it was one of our first experiences using an iPad for a play type situation um, with our students. Noah took the photo, so this was a, a shared experience. And uh, um, this boy, Guy, he ha um, has very limited functional use of his hands, and the interaction here was quite passive. At that time, this was already a few years ago, and at that time, the accessibility features of the device where there weren't very many. We didn't have assistive devices to use with the device, but it was a very playful situation. It was a very enjoyable situation. It was one of the first times that we both realized that this device is gonna help us. We are gonna be able to use this for our students, and we're gonna be able to make change. Uh, since then, the iPad has evolved and has our use of the iPad, and we're gonna show you some of that today. There was a lot of debate in the academic and educational um, circles about what kind of place digital play has in the lives of young children. If it does have a place, what that place is. But tablets and other digital devices are in children's homes. They're in their classrooms. So in the words of Renekina and Kirvin in the article, iPads, Digital Play and Preschoolers, if digital play in its different forms is to become a significant part of young children's lives, which as you see the article is from 2011, and we know that those devices already are a significant part of their lives, they're there. In the developed world, there probably isn't a home without a smartphone or some kind of digital device. So it is important to examine its developmental value from the same perspective that's taken when considering the significance of traditional forms of play in child development. Those devices are there. We need to look at them and we need to see and measure and look at the impact that they're having on play and on child development. This article refers to the typically developing child. When we consider children with disabilities, we know that the iPad has already had a huge impact. Um, but much of the literature out there is on its impact on communication and on learning. There isn't a lot of literature on its impact for play. In our experience, we have seen a very significant impact on the um, play opportunities that it affords. I would like to sort of emphasize that we always promote intelligent use of the device. What that means is that we always consider the context, the family, the culture values. We consider how much is appropriate, when we should use. We wouldn't want to see a typically developing infant in this situation playing with uh, on an iPad. It's probably unnecessary. We wouldn't want to see a typically developing baby in a bouncy chair with an iPad. But if this was a, a, a child with disabilities, this might be something that might be appropriate. We always consider intelligent use, and it's an important concept to consider. Before I continue, we need to Look at what play is. Play can take many forms. It can be symbolic in nature, it can be constructive, it can be active or quiet, it can be in a group, it can be alone, it can be rule-based as in board games, or it can be more free. In the literature, it tends to be a, a somewhat of an elusive concept to define. Every researcher or academic that researches play defines it through his own lens, according to his own discipline. As Pedro mentioned in the, in the Ludi network, we've adopted Garvey's definition. Play is a range of voluntary, intrinsically motivated activities normally associated with recreational pleasure and enjoyment. It means that the child wants to do this kind of play and that they are motivated by what they are doing and not by some external reward and that they enjoy themselves. We always consider play for the sake of play, play as a behavior, not play as a tool to work on other skills, but play as play. 
in reviewing the literature and all the different definitions, there were a lot of terms that came up that I'm going to mention that were common to some of the definitions and we're gonna to refer to them again later. So play as a behavior is characterized as active. It's, much, it's not much of a passive activity. Um, it's process oriented, meaning that the child is involved in the activity of the play and not what comes at the end. And that it often involves some sort of suspension of reality, symbolism, pretend. As occupational therapists, we can't talk about play without talking about playfulness. Playfulness is a, con a construct unique to play, and um, Anita Bundy, who is an occupational therapist that, because of the Ludi Network, we actually had the opportunity to meet, she developed a model of playfulness and an assessment to assess it. And in, in her model, uh, playfulness is determined by the amount of internal control a child feels, so how much are they in control of the situation? The intrinsic motivation, how much are they motivated by the activity that they're doing? Um, and their ability to suspend reality and how able they are to express or receive social cues. So before we continue and look at the play of a child with disabilities, it's important to look at play in a typically developing child. And you can see in this example, a two and a half year old engaging in pretend play. And please look at all the skills he is using. He's constantly talking and sharing. He's constantly moving independently using both hands. <laughs> He's pretending. He gets up by himself, he moves around, he's decided he wants to do something else. Incorporating elements of fantasy and reality together. Exploring different concepts of size. Many, many skills in one simple interaction. Okay. So, in, in looking at that video, it's important to really notice. Sorry. Okay. Um, it's important to notice all the different skills he is using and what we see often in children with disabilities is that those skills are often underdeveloped. They tend to engage in a narrower range of leisure and play activities and when they do play they require assistance often um, and supervision and when we speak to parents and we're setting goals with parents it's often a concern. My child doesn't play by himself. My child doesn't have many things that they like to play with. When we started introducing the iPad, we started to see independent play. And at Beit Izzy, we conducted a questionnaire of parents and staff to hear what they felt the impact was that the iPad is bringing to their lives. And here are some of the things they've said. The iPad created a revolution in their lives and in the life of their child. She can play with all the things she couldn't before. Dolls, pretend play. It's a tool that allows him to include other children in his play. So overall, there was a sense of an improvement in the quality of life of the child and the family. So when we think back to that video, that the little boy playing, and we consider a child with um, physical disabilities, let's say, in that situation, we might see poor manipulation skills and an inability to manipulate all the toys. We might see a child that can't get from sitting to standing by themselves and move around independently. We might see a child that can't engage um, and, and communicate effectively and not make his desires or ideas known to the parent or caregiver, which would require more involvement in that activity on the behalf of the parent and the caregiver or the therapist. This in turn may lead to play that is maybe less active, so a more passive type play. Maybe the child will feel less in control, and they might even be, it might even be less voluntary, maybe because they can't tell me what they really want. They're doing what I want them to do, and not what they want to do. And in turn, this can lead to a decrease in play experience, play success, and a playful nature to the play.
If we think about a child with intellectual disabilities, we often see um, a, a decrease in initiative to play. Um, we may see a decrease in problem solving skills. If he went to open the cupboard and he couldn't do it, he might give up and move on to something else. They may have difficulty attending for more than a few minutes in the play and the play doesn't have a chance to develop. And they may have difficulty with pr the pretend. And again, that could lead to a decrease in intrinsic motivation or a more passivity to the play, less volunteering nature, and a lead to a decrease in play experience and success. When we consider children with various disabilities, visual impairments, hearing impairments, psychiatric disorders, autistic spectrum disorders, and sensory processing difficulties, then each of those um, children will have different characteristics um, that will affect their play. So then, what are the options that we have for children with disabilities? It is very difficult to find off-the-shelf store-bought toys for children with disabilities. We then need to look to specialty catalogs often, and those toys are very expensive. If we consider outdoor play, um, in Israel and at Beit Dizzi Shapiro, we have a, an accessible park program, but in many places in the world, that's not a reality, and there aren't accessible outdoor spaces. It requires a lot of creativity of the parents and the therapists to find suitable play options for their children. So why does the iPad work? Well, if you think about physical limitation, your whole game fits in one small rectangle. So if you have some physical limitation, it's eliminated. It works with a fingertip. So a lot of physical limitation is, elimit is eliminated. Um, it's very intuitive to use. Our students with moderate to severe uh, intellectual disability figure it out very quickly and enjoy it very much. The feedback is immediate, it's significant. The graphics are attractive and it's extremely motivating. Another reason why we love it for play is because it's age appropriate and really it's kind of ageless. The elderly use it, young children use it, students use it, we see it everywhere. And what it gives to this device is a normative factor. That means when a child with disabilities is playing on an iPad, he can look to the child beside him, to his siblings, to the child next door, to people all around him, and they are all using the same device. So he doesn't stand out, he feels like everybody else. Now, um, Noah is gonna come and she's going to show us some examples of exactly what we are doing with our students. Okay, thanks Dana. So I'm going to show you a few examples and I'll try to connect to the terms that Dana just talked about. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, and I try to connect uh, to the terms that Dana just talked about uh, play and playfulness. And in a few minutes you will um, understand why I'm so happy to see the woman that's sitting there. <laughs> um, for many of our children, using the iPad, it's their first time um, for independent play. And I'm going to show you now Ronnie, she's an amazing girl, right, Betty? Because just have, uh, her mother, <laughs> she just entered the room. <laughs> I'm very happy you're here. Um, so I'm going to show you um, a short video of Ronnie. She's, uh, she has, oops, a minute. No, no. No, 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 one minute. Ronnie, she has a pretty severe uh, cerebral palsy. And she has difficulty using her hands. They, most of the time, very clo close to her body. But, and she's a very smart girl. Her, her cognitive level is very high, and we were very challenging to find appropriate game, appropriate toy for her. And the iPad was a very good solution. Now I show you. She's playing now a um, Toka Kitchen. It's an app by Toka Boca. I think it may be like, it, it's two years ago, like the first or second time she used the iPad, so it's a little difficult for her. So it's kind of pretend play. After she chose a uh, vegetable from the refrigerator, she can choose uh, the tool from the, um, she, she chose the knife. And it's not the conventional pretend play that we know, but it's as close to pretend play that Ronnie can play. 
and um, it's, of course it's very important and now Ronnie can play many other games like memory cards or any other games that we want for a six years old girl to play because still it's still uh, difficult for her to use uh, cards or uh, anything that it's big like board games. And her mother, she told, she told us, last year, remember? She told us, um, we had the, um, our life before the iPad and after the iPad in a manner of the independency of Ronnie, because before the iPad, Ronnie always needs someone with her when she's playing. And Ronnie, she's a very playful girl. She wants to play all the time. So uh, it sometimes can be even exhausting because you need al always to be with her. And after the iPad, Ronnie can play by herself, which is very important. First of all, for warning, because children play by themselves since they are very young. But also for the family. Now, her mother, fine, okay, I have another girl here at home I can play with. I have some free time. And if Dana just talk about the quality of life for children and their family, I think uh, it's a good example. Just a minute about Tokaboka. If we're talking about play, I have to mention this company. We use a lot their apps. They are very playful, and I recommend you to visit their website and the blog because they talk a lot about play and playfulness. And we like their apps because they are really the characters are very humor and they're not they're very imaginary and, and they're whimsical and creative. And many of the apps are really uh, promote um, playing together, and they're really great. And there's another example of a kind of pretend play. This sweet girl, she's playing Peppy Beth. Well, Peppy, first of all, she really loves Peppy. Peppy is the character there. It's like Spider-Man for boys, she likes Peppy. So if you tell her there is Peppy in the room, she's coming, which is also very important because sometimes we have problem with the motivation. And you see her here, how she's playing. Well, her speech therapist, she told me that, that many times the problem she has with this girl is that um, she needs to help her to get her own ideas. And what she's doing now is the first time she saw her have an, an, her own idea. She touched the water spout and started to wash uh, Peppy's hair. Because many times with our children, we need to help them to have ideas because their thinking are very concrete. And uh, here in, in the iPad, she said, it's the first time I see. She just touched the water spout and, and she started to wash uh, Peppy's head. And also, if we are thinking about when I'm playing with a doll, and if I take a bottle of uh, Neptune shampoo and I'm telling the child, let's put shampoo on the head of the doll, sometimes it's not enough to motivate our children because they need to use imagination and more abstract thinking, which is hard for our children. But if they touch here the shampoo bottle on the screen of the peppy bed, there is a bubble and there's a f and there's, it's so motivate them. They, they need those uh, stimulate, stimulating. And if we're thinking about what Dana talked before, we really see the voluntary, the internal perception of control, and of course, the, uh, how much he is enjoying it. And many times people criticize the iPad and say it could be very isolating and we can see the children stuck their face uh, on the screen. But uh, we find it could be really the opposite and it really can promote interaction. For example, the, uh, the picture on the left, you see the uh, children around the iPad. There's one girl, she's playing and the other children come and uh, see what she's doing with something that we are not really used to see with other toys because they're really motivated and they want to see what, sh what she's doing and it's a potential for interaction, for communication between them. The other example here, it's those two sweet girls playing in their free time in, in the kindergarten. They chose to go there and play. She started to be very bossy. <laughs> And if you're talking about playing together, it's very important to talk about playing together um, around siblings. Uh, for our children, it many times we, said we know how, how it's so hard for them to play with their brothers and sisters. 
And many parents told us that, that since they use the iPad, they really see the interaction between the ch our children and their uh, brother and sister because everybody liked the iPad. <laughs> like Dana said, there's no age, everybody loves it. You can see here, very normative situation. Sitting on the sofa, <laughs> playing memory card app. First of all, I don't think Henley would ever play memory card if it's a real one and not in the app. And there is no chance her brother plays with her any other game. <laughs> and what's also important here is that she's playing memory card with six, six cards. For her brother, it's not, uh, it's very, very easy, but still he's playing with her. And this is very nice about the iPad, because if I take a simple app, like a cause and effect app, even for me, if it's nice, I will like it, because it's in the iPad, and people love using the iPad. They, love the, they like the, to touch in and to see what happened and the feedback. And we usually, uh, sometimes we uh, use uh, multiplayer games. It's app that there are um, for multiplayer um, users. And this is an example of using Talking Tom. Talking Tom is a very, sh uh, very famous app. Uh, I think it's the first app that I've known. It's very, very popular. And uh, we had the chance to meet, to meet Isa. Last time we were in Cyprus in the Ludi meetings. And she's a developer. She's from Slovenia. It was very interesting to hear her story. She, d she developed the app. She has now a very big uh, success company. And she said, we start getting feedback from therapists. Uh, the impact that the, this uh, game have on children and adults with disabilities. And it's very important for us to be in contact with the, those app developers because, because this is our way to make any change. So she was very interesting about our story and I really hope she will come uh, to visit us at Betty Easy Shapiro. She, she, she said she will. Now you see Yahel playing with Talking Tom. It was very spontaneous. I just see it and took my... I'm sure you see how fun it is. And she has two items because the pink one is for communication. <laughs> so it's great. It's what really was she cho chose to do it, and it, it it wasn't in the therapeutic session, which is very good because many times we want to work, and it's good because she started making voices, which is one of our goals with Yael. But if you are in a therapeutic session, it's much harder. But here, when she's doing, it was her choice, free time. We got we got it all. And this happened in the snoozeron room, which is one of my favorite rooms at uh, Betty Z Shapiro. It's a very calm room. It's um, white and um, and quiet, and you have this soft sound and soft light. And Dana, uh, she's doing a weekly group there with the physiotherapist, and sometimes she uses the iPad. Well, here she used the heat pad. It's, uh, I call it snoozy app, because when you touch, you touch, it's a cause and effect app, which is very suitable to the snooze land, because everything is very easy there. And this guy is, um, is lying on his stomach, so he can't use his hands. And he starts using the app with his nose. Uh, I don't know if it was by accident or not, but he started using it. And uh, the girl that was sitting beside him, she find it hilarious, and she starts laughing. And she starts uh, imitating him, also she can use her hands. She starts using the iPad also with her nose. And it was so fun situation to start laughing and imitate each other. And it was really enjoyable. And it could never happen without the iPad, because the guy couldn't um, activate any other tool. So it was great. And another example of Guy, uh, he used uh, switches. And I show you the video and then I explain. He uses two switches with his hand. Uh, uh, each switch is another um, function. And then you see the smile. Amazing. 
So if you remember our, f our first slide, the, Dana, the picture of Dana, she's holding the iPad and the guy was sitting beside her, it's, it's, uh, it's this guy. And uh, now we really progress and Apple really progressed because we can use uh, switches with the iPad, which is uh, really amazing. And it's a very simple game, even for Guy, it's not really challenging, but, but he really loves it because, because he can play it by himself. So he always chooses to play those kind of apps. And again, you can see all those terms like internal control, voluntary, and of course, enjoying. In my last, my last example, which I find very, very important, it's, she's a student in our school, and she's playing the same app like Guy, the Touch to Jump by Inclusive Technology. And we are very, very have a um, hard time to find a game for Adi because she's really passive. It, there's nothing really that she's interesting in. We are, and we are always thinking about what to give our children in their free time. <coughs> and, um, she, and since she starts, uh, because we don't want to use uh, babyish toys, and she, since she's, she knows the iPad, she really improved in this aspect. Look. So it's, sim it's a very simple app, but we find it really amazing because for children with intellectual, intellectual disability, and Adi, she has a really severe intellectual disability, they are, usually they are very, very passive. And here she's doing something, she's doing like she's supposed to do it, she's, she's doing it from the beginning to the end. And now she really improved, she can also point with his finger, point with his finger. And if I open the iPad for her, she can find the, the, the app that she like, and she's amazing with that. And she also starts to use two pictures on the iPad. So it's, uh, it's very important for us, and we see it a lot in a student. And also sometimes because of the iPad, we really found skills that we didn't know that exist in our, in our children, because they did never show such a skills before the iPad. And? So, if you don't understand, <laughs> thank you.